section one where we have covered specifically the different perspective related to the existing labor law its issue and the pain point and then secondly we have discussed about the future perspective of the four new codes what is happening the four new codes are not nothing new in that that is the merger of the existing labor law and the little bit has been changes done and a new concept has been introduced there but it is going to be impact the employer tremendously so this is all about the section one so so here mr raj joined from chennai tamil nadu welcome you raj here again in this live session so other member please quickly write on where you have joined in this live session today so that i can be welcome you personally in this live session and then we will start the exactly what we are covering here and specifically what we are learning and other way we are getting to be ready for the future changes of the level law and then i will also share with you some strategies how you can create the career usp for the future success in your career so this is all about related to this program and what we are exactly covering in that so that schedule has been already shared with you you have get that through your email however before that i will also one time share with you what exactly we are covering and specifically we are developing a system in this live session and that tomorrow when you join back to your office you can implement that in your office and create a portfolio and a credibility for your personal professional branding in your organization where the perspective of the labor law are impacting the organization in the present scenario as well as the changes happening in the future so what we are exactly covering in this first of all you have received one link so however we have divided this whole session in the three different rooms where we are covering the different sections in the first section we are covering as of now the introduction as well as the most probably the labor law perspective in the present scenario as well as the in future changes what is happening and what is the collaboration between these two scenarios one is the at present and the second one is the in the future what is happening so here that asloob here from the gaia bihar welcome you asloob and here in this live session today and further here i'm sharing with you the whole agenda of this master class today and it is not just for the sharing of something with you it is also developing the concept developing the system which you can implement in your organization when you resume back to your office by tomorrow because today is sunday and so most of the people who are in the job they are on the weekly off and on the weekly rest so that's why it is one of the important time for learning with this maybe the last sunday of 2020 21 also i here wish you the happy new year in the for the 2022 and you will make progressive your career so that with learning of this program you will get some advanced concepts so you can implement that so in the first section, what we are covering specifically, the existing law, what are their impact on the industries and so that we can collaborate that with the future changes and how you have to prepare for that. So in the section number first, we just understanding, we will understand what is the impact on the industry, the existing labor law and then the coming future labor law. Then in the second section, which we have specifically divided in the second room and that second room it will be automatically connect you will be automatically connected in this room so you do not have to go to click some links there and you have to receive only the single one link for the access of that and with it, after the first section completing there will be a short break five to ten minutes so it will be decided according to the timing which we have decided for this program so however it is two, uh, two hours and 30 minutes for program so most probably it will be beyond for that also it will be depend on you and your questioning so that's why just keep the notepad with you what we are going to learn so you can ask those questions at the end so for that we have specifically kept 30 minutes for the question and answer whatever your questions will be that we will be covered all those in the last 30 minutes specifically and during 
this session, whatever the question will be, you mind and we, you will have some questions. So note down all this, keep those questions for at the end so that we can cover all the aspects which we are going to and which we have specifically projected in this whole program, making your learning as a system for the future preparedness and readiness. So let's begin with the program today exactly what we are covering and how we are going with this program. So before that, it is required to that I have to share with you the platform where we are interacting today and the specifically the agency or the organization who is organizing the specifically this program. And this is our 33rd masterclass. However, due to some reason last week, we have canceled this program. And so that's why we rescheduled this for this week and this is our 33rd program since july 2021 so here exactly what you are getting with this program so here you will be get a lot of things whatever the data whatever the templates which we will share with you or i will share with you in this live session that you will be get as it is for your implementation that are be ready to implement the template which i'm sharing with you that will be get you after completion of this program and second one this program is a certificate program you will also get a certificate of this program so how will we get we have some system for that i will share that system and the requirement for the certificate at the end and then after you will also get the video recording of this session we are boarding this whole video and you will get this video session, a video recording of this session. It will be available by tomorrow evening. So it will be shared with you through email. So this is all about the things which you are getting from this program. And secondly, the most important thing which we are going, which you are getting to learn here, that is the developing of the compliance management portfolio, ready to implement in every organization perspective of the different organization with the existing labor law as well as the future. Required by the organization, we have to share with you where we are interacting and who are the developer of this program. So specifically, we are interacting on the SBR Learning Studios digital learning platform where we are providing the different types of the learning solution for the individual as well as the groups. But furthermore, this organization was established in the May 2020. So it is now around one year, one and a half year old organization. This organization was established with the objective to provide the best learning platform to everyone with the reasonable cost. Then this program, when it was established, there the managing team has established a vision this, uh, for this organization also to influence and educate the 100 million of people by 2040 with the best of knowledge which is required to cater the true professionalism in future and also we are on the mission to influence and educate 25,000 students every year this is our annual target since this organization was established however Earlier, we was some of the other smaller section, then we just go with the different aspect related to the digital learning also where we are providing most of the HR related services and other services also you can check out that I will share that you also and then we have developed some values. Our value is to having a long term association with our customer as well as who are the learner with us and other services. So it's come to now. When we are the digital learning platform, when it was initially established, then after we also uh, that moved to the other service sectors and that are the specifically the learning sector, which is the physically also, then after we are also providing the services related to HR, that is the learning service corporate consulting, individual and group mentoring, professional Zoom building also, digital solutions specifically, where we are providing the learning solution for the every aspect of the professionalism, through digital only, then we have also the digital library services also. So how you can access this, so I will share with you here for just a link on that, but you can check out all that on our website. But in the learning solution, we are providing these five types of solution for the individuals as well as the groups, as the organization also. So that is the personal development, the professional development, entrepreneurial development, the leadership development, and the business leader development also. Then, it's come to the where you can connect with us. However, it is today we are connecting live here, but furthermore, in the future, you have provided some platform where you can interact with us. 
other to those platforms or the community you can also connect with us through our email id you can also check out our websites that is the www.azutrends.com and thereafter we have also the digital academy on the name of the Sarbi rambo school of e-learning where most of the training programs which are landed there and the people connect to that digital academy where you can learn most of the program we have there. So there we have as of now more than 15 and more of the live program related to the different five number of aspects we have shared with you so that is related to hr and level also and the other perspective developing of the individual as well as the corporate development where we are providing the different types of the trainings then after we have the social media platform where we provide the insights updates related to the learning so there we are specifically at the dedicated three different social media platform which is providing the soft skill learning support on the name of SBR learning studio then the education as well as the insights and the changes about the hr and the trends about the hr we are sharing specifically on the social media platform that is the four slide hrb rambo and apart from that the people are also aspiring to learn from the global leaders for that we are providing the global leaders book summaries as well as the learning in our platform so that you can also check out so these are the different types of the platform where you can connect with us after this programs and for future also how you have provided the community you are the member of our great learning league community if you have any query or concern related to these programs and any concern you want to share with us and you want to get our opinion on that so you can check out on those library at the social media platforms as well as on the community which you have been provided then it come to now with whom you are interacting so here you are interacting with the with me so my name is ks shirini marson i have done more than i have done mba llb and i will certified hr specialist or the professional from the SHRM, and I have more than 18 years of experience in the Indian and as well as the overseas organization, where I have specifically worked in the labor law as well as the HR domain. So this was all about the organization, the platform where we are interacting and with whom you are interacting related to and for this live session today. So then it comes now specifically related to the program what we are covering in that however this program is specifically making you prepared for the future so become ready when the, there are the new labor law coming in the name of the labor codes so as of now the new is coming and it may be possibly it will be implemented from the 2022 first april in the new financial year so before that you should be well prepared and well ready for implementation and there are the certain number of the changes that incorporated by the government in those laws so that you need to be make changes according to those changes in your organization so for that you should be well prepared for that so that's why the perspective of the labor law that is changing in the indian history and also in the future it is going to be changed and it is impacting the industries, it is impacting the professional who are dealing with the different labor laws. And then after you have to be prepared for the future, you have to create the USP for that. So all that things we are learning in this program. But when we are going to be learn about the future, what is going to be happen? So we have to just go through with the existing changes, the existing issues with the labor law or the existing labor law how they are impacting the organization as of now and why is since independent indian independence there is 76 years so why we are not still having such compliance or management in our organization so that the organization freely can move with the services without any impact on the industries so there are certain issues however that are related to the some loopholes in the existing labor law and the 
practices the organization as well as the people who are dealing with the labor law domain they have accepted certain practices that is the one of the issue for the employer so that's why i can say it it is the biggest pain point for the employer how you can remove that make it easy for your organization to build your credibility as well as making your organization fully compliant with the regulation however with the existing also in the future so that we are covering all that here so let's begin with the different topics we are covering here with from the existing labor law so for that we need to be understand when we are going to be assess the future perspective of the labor law in indian scenario so that we need to be understand first the existing labor law and its obligation for the organization however when we talk about the industry specifically in india so there are around 78 number of existing labor law which are implemented which are applied to the different industries and if we talk about the industrial sector so that are the three types of the major industrial sector which we divided in the primary sector secondary sector as well as the territorial sector when we talk about the different industries in these three sector so it come to the in the primary sector that is specifically the resources which or the organization which are into the processing the natural resources and in the secondary sector of the industrial establishment the industries that come the majorly who are processing the natural resources in the different or the the output of the natural resources to the different product different parts and there the processes are dangerous hazardous so that's why most of the labor law apply to the secondary sector then after the third sector that is the territory where the mostly the it industries the hotel restaurant that are come or the service sector come in the territory sector so that's why here one thing i which i want to clear with you here for example we will take air the manufacturing setup because manufacturing come in the secondary sector where most of the existing labor law apply to them and they have certain obligation for the employer and that obligations are still the pain points for the employer because still the organ the employer they consider that you should be comply with the every regulations but it is not possible somewhere there are the some practices adopted there are the loophole in the system as well as there are the people who are responsible for complying and who has been appointed as a representative of the organization they comply the regulation for presenting to the employer not with the requirement of the regulation as well as the applied law so that's why understanding the future perspective of the changing labor law we need to understand the current issues and pain point of the employer just we are as i mentioned that we will exemplify here the factories or the manufacturing specifically and every manufacturing industry that come under the factories act 1948 when we see when a factory established by a that a company or an organization or a group of people so they need to comply with the certain regulations where you require the certain approvals licensing or registration then after the indian labor law majorly they have the three major objective when these indian labor law was introduced and implemented by the government so it was introduced and implemented majorly for securing the three objective so that is the health safety and welfare of the industrial laborer in indian prospect however globally where the labor laws are applicable in all the countries so their major objective is only the health safety and welfare securing the health safety and welfare of the industrial labor so similarly when we talk about the factory so there are the different types of the hazard processing every manufacturing they have the hazard process. however it is the minor it is a major so it will be depend on the process also so that's why the organization they have been required to oblige with and implement all those regulation of the law which has been prescribed in that so when we come with the when we 
any organization, any employer introduce for in establishment on factories, so they need to obtain certain approvals, license and registration. When you obtain such certain license uh, that the approval and registration, you have to produce some records with them. And then after the regulation that has been prescribed and give you the instruction, these are the following facility. You need to be facilitated to your employee or in your organization establishment where you are implementing that. If those obligations or instruction not fulfilled by the employer, so there are the different types of the punishment which has been prescribed in the law. If you see in the factory's perspective, so there is the three year of implement that the imprisonment and fine up to two lakh rupees. Also cancellation of your factory license is also available. If the organization and they do not fulfill the obligation which has been instructing when they provided the approval or the licensing and registration to the factories so there are the provision of the imprisonment for the employer specifically for three years and fine up to two years it will impact the employer in the three particular areas one if the employer will be found guilty on the certain obligation not fulfilled, he will be imprisoned. And if the imprisonment is not there, he will definitely be fined with the rupees or two lakh rupees. And then also cancel of the business license as well as the factory license. When it will be imposed the three out of all those three, anyone, so it will impact their image, their business, and their financial status also. So this is the one of the major pain point for the organization in India, even it is the 76 year of our independence, but these issues are still there related to the having a business process with the regulation of the different people. As well, when there are the different types of industry which we have that are shared with you the three sector, so one is the the broad sector is the manufacturing where it will be covered with the or by the regulation of the Factories Act 1948. The industries which are not factories but that are existing in that they have also to follow the regulation of the different existing labor law. For that, there are the law specifically the shops and commercial establishment. However, this law is the state specific and the state regulation. But further, it is providing the different types of the obligation for the organization they need to be fulfilled. So the industries which are not the factories that covered under the shop and commercial establishment, they need to get the restoration of their establishment. So there is a time period required. Then they need to be assured the employment of the adult workers as well as the hours of working and also that the three major objective of the Indian labor law, the health, welfare, and the safety, that is the responsibility of the every industrial establishment that you need to be assured that. Then after, you need to be provided or facilitate them the weekly rest of the pay and wages for the holiday also. Then the different types of the other employment related regulation you need to be comply with. If these, obligations are not fulfilled by the shops and the commercial establishments so there is also the provision of the fine up till one lakh rupees at cancellation of the business license also so it is not just for the factories also there it will be impacted industry so every industry the labor law will impact their employer that's why the employer Appoint their representative who know about the labor law compliances, they can be fulfilled all the provisions related to the labor law so that the organization they can assure the compliance of these regulations which are applied to them. Then it is related to the organization and the different industries also then it come to the the organization their businesses depend on the employee whom they are engaging mostly the organization engage the employee 
through direct as well as the indirect also. When it comes to the indirect employee in the corporate flow suite known as the outsourcing, but for the law perspective, Contract Labor Act 1970. So this is also the un one another law which specifically promotes the three objectives of the Indian labor law. So that is the your facilitation of health, welfare, and safety measures in the organization. And for that, specifically the organization required to have registration. When you are engaging the manpower through the third party, which is regulated through the contract labor act, so for that you need to be register your establishment as an employer, principal employer, then your supplier, your vendor, he should also be registered as the contractor under the law. So that, that's why you can engage the certain outsourcing agencies in your organization when you are registered with the law to fulfill the regulation for that. And then after you have to maintain certain record for that and the supplier, the vendor, that have also to maintain certain records related to the supply of manpower in the principal employer perspective. And the law specifically, which you need to understand in the case of the Contract Labor Act 1970. So there, it is also provided that the principal employer is the primary responsible for every aspect of which you require to be facilitated by the law or under the Contract Labor Act 1970. That is the responsibility of the that principal employer to facilitate all those provisions. So you may have questioned that why, because the manpower which are going to be supplied by the contract labor the contractor that does not deploy at the premises of that contract it will be employed or deployed specifically on the principal employer premises so that's why it is the primary responsibility of the principal employer that all the regulation and of the prescribed norm under the contract labor that is the responsibility of the principal employer to fulfill all that if these obligations which is required a restoration by the both the parties then facilitate of the same provision which has been prescribed under the law and also providing the same facility and the display of the different notices related to the contract labor so if these provisions are not fulfilled by the contractor also it is the responsibility and obligation for the employer so there is the provision of three months of imprisonment and fine up to thousands rupees and a cancellation of your registration certificate registration certificate means principal employer certificate when it will be cancelled then you cannot engage the outsourcing manpower it will be illegal practice now and if you are not fulfilling these requirements so that's why it is also Engaging of the contractual manpower, mostly the organization, they engage the contractual part of transferring their obligation to the third party. But exactly, the law is prescribed and making responsible the principal employer, maintaining the certain provision and facilitating the different provision of the law. It is the responsibility of that. So it doesn't mean you are engaging the third party. However, for some perspective and some point of reason that you can transfer your liability to the contract, but ultimately you are responsible for the everything. And if it is not the obligation which has been prescribed under the law, when it will be granted or it will be provided specifically, when you mean the employer will obtain the reservation, there has been specifically instruction provided what you have to facilitate if that is not fulfilled. So there is the reason of the three months of imprisonment and also fine up to thousand rupees and then the restoration cancellation of the restoration and it will also impact the three areas related to the businesses of the employee one their businesses their plans as well as their image that's why the law the existing law that are specifically the pain point for the employer then it comes to the when you are engaging the employee to direct as well as the contract labor also so they what do you need to be paid to them does employer can decide it by themselves in the history there were the many practices where the discrimination for the manpower done by the employer so that's why 
in the different areas or the different point of time, the government was introduced different reforms to scaling the industrial labor, their exploitation by the employer. When they are the industry existence of the industrial, then they, it is depend on business are all depend on the human being and the employer, they engage the manpower for their businesses, but now what you have to pay to them for their services, so it can not be decided by the employer what you have to pay. It is based on the industries and it is based on the market also, but there is the one minimum requirement. But the law, one thing you also need to be make it clear that the law does not give you that you have to give that whole thing. Whatever the law is defining, that is the minimum requirement. So that's why whatever the organization as per the living a standard livelihood of an individual so that he can fulfill all his needs when he is rendering his services for the organization or employer. So the law assure the minimum livelihood for that individual. So that's why the whatever required to be paid to him assure the minimum paying for the individual industrial laborer or worker that will be decided and that is prescribed by the minimum wage act 1948 it means that there is the law specifically the existing law which regulate and define the wages what the employer need to be paid to them and when it is required the employer need to pay a minimum amount to any that the industrial worker whom they are engaging for their businesses so after that how you can pay that and what is required for that there are the two things which you require to be keep in mind while assuring the regulation of the minimum wage act 1948 one the minimum wage that will be prescribed and that will be decided by the government the state specific government because the law given the right to the state for defining and prescribing the minimum wage for their state specific that will be which has been prescribed by the state so that you need to be assured to every individual in your organization however the minimum wage that has been decided based on the different level of the skills so according to the skill you need to be paid that minimum prescribed amount or the wage specifically for that skill where you are engaging an individual employee and secondly mostly the organization where they do not fulfill the obligations that is related to the minimum wage cannot be bifurcated in the different components mostly the organization which we have also seen we have many clients also so they what they do they bifurcate due to the some statutory regulation and getting the benefit from the statutory or not paying the statutory amount so you bifurcate the minimum wage in the one and two components so minimum wage is only the one component and that you need to be keep in one component and in the minimum wage there is the inside two different things one is the basic the second one is your dearness allowances so that should be in one component only so that you cannot bifurcate and then whatever has been prescribed by this government the skill wise you need to be paid to them in the form of a single component if this obligation you did not you mean the employer does not fulfill so there is a provision of the six month of imprisonment to the employer and fine up to thousand rupees when you are assuring that the minimum wage you are paying to them every individual but now it comes to the question that can decide the employer when it required to be paid then employer pay the minimum wage if that is the essential the minimum amount need to be paid by the employer to any individual industrial laborer or worker who have been engaged in your organization can it be paid by two months or three months as depend on the employer or that there are also the minimum requirement has been prescribed by the law and the regulation specifically made for that which regulations are introduced before the independence in 1936 that is the payment of wage act 1936 however after the when it was first time introduced before independence there are the many changes and amendments happened 
but the objective of the law are still same. So it is that whatever the pay has been decided, the minimum wage you have to pay that, and based on the requirement based on the marketing and the industry perspective, whatever you have decided, so that you need to be paid to the individual employee as per the prescribed time limit by the organization. So the specifically, the payment of wage at 1936 decide and protecting the right of the individual worker that they need to be get paid for the what they have served and what are their requirements and those will be hooked so that the employer need to decide the one time limit for paying off that wages. So however, it will be specifically on the weekly basis also, daily basis also, and but for the organization or the organized sector, it is the monthly wages and so you need to be paid them on monthly basis. So for that, there are also the limitation prescribed and limitation provided under the law. If you are engaging the below than a thousand number of manpower, you need to be made the payment or you need to be made the payment for the wages or the wages period or the working period in the within seven days of the closing of your wage period of pay period. So mostly the organization. So it is that that the thousand number below the thousand number the Manpower, if you are engaging, you need to be or make all the payments related to the wages before seven. If it is the number are more than a thousand, so it is the tenth of the next month or the ten after the or within ten days of the completion or closing of the previous wage period. And however, there are also specifically provided the provision. The employer will decide that the mode of payment what it should be however there are the many changes and amendment happen so now it is required that every payment should be made in the electronic transaction form to the individual so that there can be the transparency also then further if the existing there are the existing employees so that you need to pay it for them seventh as well as the tenth also but if the employee that has been exit from the organization so what should be the regulation for that and what the organization need to follow for that. However, the organization, they have the tendency that they can hold the payment for some reason, some time. We have also seen that the organization or specifically the people who are dealing with the payout or making the payment intentionally, they hold the, the payment which required to be paid to them. But the payment of wage act decided or prescribed that every amount which is required to be paid to any employee even that is the exit employee, if any amount is payable to the employer, that the employee by the employer, you need to be assured, means the employer need to assure that within the prescribed time period under the provision of the law. So however, every payout which is required to be paid so that the maximum time limit is 30 days. If it is more than that, it will be the biggest obligation for the employer. And however, if the, that the exit should be terminating anyone, so it should be within two working days. So it may be you have to the question related to the if it is like that the 30 days so why it, how it should be within 30 days within the 30 days it should be concluded or the conclusively you have to close their accounts but in the within two days in the case of exit employees so whatever is their due amount be present their working day their lease whatever are those so that need to be paid within two days but there are the provision of some gratuity also some bonuses also so that you can take the time for the 30 days but thereafter you need to get consent from the employee also everything that has been paid to them otherwise if something is open there and the employee he can claim that in the different platforms also so it will also be biggest obligation for the employer so that's why you need to be keep in mind that when you are making the payment of the full and final you should make clear it that there should be one declaration you have to receive from the employee whom you are paying out the full and final settlement there is no future due available or pending for that individual person Similarly, when we talk about the minimum wages as well as the way or the time period you have to pay to them, then after the law also providing the specific statutory norms as well as the social security provision for them. If an employee that are working for an organization 
and that organization are specifically that employee are working for that organization for the longer period. However, it is the concept for that if any employee join an organization, they expect that will be continue their service till then to retirement also. But further, what should be the motivation to having a long period of services with an organization? So that's why there is the minimum service award decided and prescribed by the law. So that is prescribed and skewed by the payment of Gratuity Act 1972. And the Gratuity Act 1972 is one and the only labor law which provides the statutory right to the employee that they can claim the gratuity from their employer. However, there are the certain period provided where the employee should have covered the certain period and amount of time where you can claim the gratuity. But it is the biggest obligation for the employer that if any employee under the provision of the law claim the gratuity, if that is not paid to the employer, that you need to we are discussing about the gratuity so specifically gratuity is the law which providing the statutory right to the employee that claim the gratuity from the employee so for that it is the minimum period of time prescribed that only those members can claim the gratuity who has completed the five year of services so by the point what should be the ideal period and where it can be claimed that law say that five years? Five years means the total working of five years, that the completed year of the calendar five years. So what exactly is it? So it is specifically the working year, completing of the four years of their services from their starting and then the fifth year, it should be ideally 440 paid a day. When the employee, they have completed the four, completed in and 240 page day in your organization, they become eligible for claiming of the gratuity from the organization. So for that, the professional or specifically the who are responsible for assuring the compliance in your organization and the people who are in the payroll, so they need to be assured and you have to keep a track of every individual who is in your organization for their services also. And if any exist, that employee has been exit from your organization who have completed four years of services as well as 200. When it comes to the gratuity, so gratuity is one of the social security law which is providing them the financial services as well as the financial support for the long services of the organization which is served by the individual employee to the employer. So Ahmed is asking, gratuity is no more five years now. I think it has been revised. Exactly, it has not been revised as per the existing norms or in the practice. So it is the five year, but it has been revised in the new labor code that is not implemented as of now. That's why we are discussing it here that the existing labor law the new labor board, it has been revised for the three years, but the labor board that are going to be implemented from the 1st of April 2022. So before that, you need to be assured the gratuity based on the existing labor law. That's why I have said in the beginning that the existing labor law and its pain point for the employer, why you need to be assured that. And similarly, when you are covering up the different law or the existing law which are covering up the social security so that there are in the another law which is mandatory for the organization need to be regulated and their norms and regulation need to be facilitated in the organization that are the epfo as well as the employee state insurance that are the two central government law which are specifically introduced for the providing and securing the retirement age of the organization not organization of the individual employee so specifically the employee provident fund act or the miscellaneous provision act 1952 provided the specifically the retirement 
protection for the employer. How it will, for the employee specifically before that, how it will be covered up and how it will become applicable for the organization for that you required to be get race ratio under the EPFO Act for that where the 10 or more, however, earlier there was the 20, now it has been changed for the 10 employees when in the organization there are 10 or more employees. You means the organization, it is mandatory to register under the EPFO. And then it is the responsibility of the employer to deduct, recover, and remittance of those contributions based on the pay or based on the wage you are paying to them. However, it is on the as per the existing norm, it is the basic also and the limitation and the ceiling is providing the 15,000. So for that case, you need to be deduct, recover and remittance the contribution which you have to recover from the employee, deduct from their salary, then it is recovering from them. However, it is from the when you are processing the payroll, you are recovering that directly. There you do not have to pay first the employee, then after you are recovering it, it is recovering from the wages you are processing during the payroll, then it is required to be remittance to the EPO. And there are also the many changes happen. However, in the many amendments happen now, the EPFO is one of the public utility service provided agency, which is fully digitalized. And it has now more transparent process available, but still the organization, they failed somewhere. Based on the, sometime that employer when you are dividing the bifurcating the main uh, minimum wage in the different components so there the obligation related to the deduction recovery and the remittance of the contribution will become the obligation for the employer when you bifurcate the minimum wage. however there is the ceiling of the fifteen thousand rupees within that limitation you have to deduct the epfo on the full amount whatever is lower to the 15,000 ceiling and another thing is that whatever the contribution you are deducting on the wages so that wage you cannot minimize you cannot reduce in the further figure so you have to maintain that so that's why when you are complying with the regulation of the EPFO you need to be considered the specifically the wage ceiling because you cannot revise or reduce that wages in further if these obligations related to the EPFO, the employer does not fulfill, there is the provision of one year of imprisonment and fine up to 5,000 rupees. And further, there are also the other certain provisions where you have been well aware about the 7A as well as the 7Q cases where the recovered contribution not paid fully by the organization or the remedy to the EPF organization. So there is the mostly the organization faced with 7A and 7 2 cases. So 7A is specifically when you do not have deducted and recovered the full amount or the specifically the regulated amount and contribution from the wages of the employee. And then thereafter you do not have remedied that. And secondly, based on that, the paid, the amount you does not pay, the EPF will recover the interest on that. It's only straight 12% per annum. So when you are not complying with these, you need to be checking your organization is those norms you are following of that. Otherwise, it will impact financially to the organization. There will be the 7A and 7 2 cases, most of the organization facing these cases also. Then similarly, when there are the obligation related to the EPFO, similarly, there are the providing the insurance or the medical facility to the industrial laborers. So there was the Employee State Insurance Act 1948 that implemented in the organization when the there is the minimum livelihood that need to be sustained by the every people, but they are to the other expenses also. So securing the right of the other facility of the industrial labor. So that's why the law of employee state insurance was implemented and introduced in 1948, where it will be 
applicable for the every organization where eight, the 10 or the more employee you are engaging. And similarly, as the EPFO, so it is also prescribed that the deduction, recovery and remittance is the responsibility of the principal employer. However, the ESIC is providing the medical facility to the industrial river. So there also, it is required that every employee which is covered under the ESIC that need to be issued or that need to be insured and issued the insurance number to them. It is the responsibility of the employer. And also the act specifically providing the regulation that the principal employer is to the first instance responsible for making of the contribution related to the ESIC. If these obligations are not fulfilled, so there is the provision of three years of imprisonment that the imprisonment for the employer and fine up to 10,000 rupees. Then it comes to the other way in the organization, there are the certain rules and regulation for the employee when you are engaging, how that individual employee will serve your organization. So there are also the norm which referred and regulated by the industrial establishment standing order 1946. So it can be exemplified that one specific, every organization, when you engage a new employee in your organization, when they join to your organization, you sign an agreement with them in the form of appointment letter. That appointment letter is the service agreement between the employer and the employer, which is defining the condition of employment. to the employee by the employer. So both the employee and employer are bound to them. However, these regulations are introduced as well as the referred and secured under the industrial standing, industrial establishment standing order 1946. However, initially it was for the factories also where it is required to the certified standing order where there are the hundred and more employee applicable. But for the, every organization, they need to be fulfill the requirement related to the industry establishment of standing order where the regulation related to the code of conduct and the condition of employment are required to be fulfilled. So you need to be check out your appointment letter, their condition, their clauses, as they are fulfilling the requirement as well as the regulation of the industrial establishment of standing order act 1946. So these are the different existing labor law which regulate the working hour condition of employment services as well as the social security, then the different provision which are specifically skewed and required to be facilitated by the employer. Like the major objective of the industrial labor law, the Indian labor law, that the health, safety and welfare major which required to implement in the organization. So these are the major law specifically, which are required to be facilitated or regulated by the employer. If not regulated, their provision, it will be obligation for the employer and that obligation will be charged or imposed with them as the, uh, specifically the imprisonment as well as the fine also, when it will be imposed as a fine as well as the, the imprisonment to the employer, it will, or also cancellation of their business license, it will impact the employer in their businesses, in their image, as well as their finance also. Then after, there are the another, the mandatory requirement, which is essential for the organization that you need to be implement or fulfill in the organization, that is the specifically the new norms related to the harassment of women at the workplace. So this is the most important requirement in the compliance for the organization which you require to be fulfilled. There are the definitely certain requirement which you require to be fulfilled, even though the organization, they are not engaging the female manpower, but you need to be fulfill the obligation under the post Act 2030. Like that you need to be constituted the internal complaint committee. Then you need to reframe the policy for that, the prohibition, prevention, and repression of the sexual harassment of women at workplace. Then that order, or you need to be display at your notice board. Then the penal consequences, if any issue or the discrimination later complaint come to the committee. So what are the penal consequences they have taken for the guilty 
fondly on the sexual harassment that you need to be display also. Then it is the responsibility of the employer and the obligation for the employer that you need to be provide the educate, the educator training to the POSH members related to the POSH Act or the IC committee, internal complaint committee members. So there it should be, as per the law, it, the structure specifically provides that there should be at least three members. If you have the 10 or more employees, so at least committee should be there, there should be three members existing there. One should be from the outside who have the knowledge about the POSH Act or who is certified in the POSH related activity and then the two members from the inside. But they all should have the all should have the understanding knowledge about the POSH Act. And furthermore, you have to make it assured that everyone should be aware about the POSH provision in your organization so that you need to be conducting the sensitization program in your organization. One of the another obligation is there, you need to submit an annual report to the district officer. The authority under the provision of the labor law or the specifically the POSH Act that is the district officer, you need to be you may the employer need to comply with all the provision of the law and then submit the annual report to the district officer. And it is the responsibility of the employer that the every specific requirement and the necessary facility and assistance that employer needs to facilitate to the IC committee and the recommendation you require to be implemented. And then further, there, if these obligations not fulfilled, so there is the provision of one lakh rupees of fine and the cancellation of the business license for the employer. So these are the different labor law, which existing labor law, which given the different and which provided the different obligations to the employer and a mandatory that need to be fulfilled by the employer anyhow. If not, so there are the provision of the imprisonment fine and the cancellation of the business license. If that thing happened, so it will impact your organization or your employer specifically, one, their damage or their business, damage their image and loss of financial. So that's why in the beginning I have said that the law that are the still the pain point for your organization. But who can help your organization as your employer to come out from these different pain points? So this is you, who are the people dealing with the labor law, who are the represented appointed by the employer to comply the regulation. So you need to focus on the area specifically how you can assure the compliance in your organization that we are going to be discussed and specifically learn in this masterclass today. So now, when we have discussed the different labor law, existing labor law and their open points and their pain point for the employer in the present scenario, then it comes to the what is going to be happen in the future also. So for that, we need to be understand the future, understand the future picture because it is said that one, uh, someone asked also the question that related to the stash, uh, that uh, gratuity, so the period has been reduced and revised. However, practically, and it is not implemented as of now, the revised period of gratuity, it is considered under the Social Security Code 2020. So first that the future perspective of the law and its impact on the industry, what is happening. However, mostly the organization, it is thought that it are the biggest changes for the or reform in the labor law history of Indian case or the Indian labor law history. This is the biggest reform related to the labor law and making ease of the business. So that we, can, we are going to also understand that how the new codes that are going to be impact the organization. Does it really the reforms for the organization? and making it the ease of doing business also. And what is the actual impact of that that we are going to be discuss here. And here I'm giving you a, the most well insight what is going to be happen in the future related to the new labor codes and when it will be implemented, how you should be ready for that and what are the changes you have to make that. So first of all, just understand 
that what is exactly the four new codes? Are that new or is this something else? Exactly what happened? There are the 29 center labor law which has been merged the existing labor law. Why I have discussed in the beginning, specifically the age to nine existing labor law and their obligation and impact to the employer. Because all those existing labor law has been merged with these four new codes. You can also say that, that the existing norms and so exactly what we are covering here that now come to the future perspective. Future perspective is the existing labor law. So when that the existing labor law that has been merged with the four new codes, so that has, that has been providing some insights also, some difficult parts has been removed and the another concept or the new concept has been introduced in the new code. That is the scenario specifically related to the four new codes. It is not new, the something that reforms are lot of things, reforms has been done as it is also, which we assume that it is the biggest change for the industrial reform, labor law reform in Indian industry, in the labor law industry. However, it is specifically only the existing labor law which regulate the different condition, like the existing labor law which regulate the wages, so that has been merged with a one code so that has been given the name of the wage code 2090. And then the new one concept has been introduced in that. So what is that concept? We will be discussed at a later on. But further, all those existing labor law, which specifically regulate the industrial relation, so that has been merged in the industrial relation code 2020. And other existing labor law, that is specifically regulated the health, the safety, working condition, and working hours. So that all codes, there are nine to ten existing labor act that are most with the occupational safety, health, and working condition code 2020. Then the other existing labor law, the central labor law, which regulate, monitor, and define the social security, which we have we have been covered in the previous part where we have discussed nine to ten existing labor law like the BF, ESIC, that the gradually. These are the existing labor law that has been merged with the new the Social Security Code 2020. So that the new changes which are going to be implemented soon after three months. So it is the now end of the 2021 and by the first of April 2022, the new codes will be implemented so that we need, we should be well prepared for that, ready for that, when these codes are going to be implemented, because it is going to be impact the organization tremendously, which we can say that it, it will have the biggest implement that the impact on the industry related to the employment services and the doing of the businesses. So what is that? impact on the, the industries when these four new codes will be implemented so that here i am going to share with you if it is we say that it is the code or it is the reforms which has been said as the biggest industrial reform when we see it from the top so we can say that it is really the reforms in the Indian labor history. So specifically, when we talk about the labor law and its compliance with the, uh, the regulation, so it said that it is just a paperwork. And so that's why the most of the people who are responsible for the labor law compliances they consider is the non-productive work or the and do not consider it the majorly where you can get the most of the output for the organization. So what is exactly happening when these four new codes will be introduced or implemented? It has been already introduced, but it will be implemented soon. So what is going to be changed? If you see from the one side, so as of now, when the labor law compliance that has been considered as a non-productive work, only the document documentation work. So in that case, we can say that it is the biggest reform in the labor law cases. 
So it is, we can see in the different perspective. So that is the way we are maintaining different types of the record in the form of the register. So as for the existing labor law, which are applies to the different industries, so that are the around 40 number of the different records in the form of a register we require to maintain. When these four new codes will be implemented, so there are the provision, or there are the only 11 number of the records you require to be maintained. And when it comes to the returns, so that return which required to be submitted by the employer to the agencies to comply with the regulation which has been prescribed in the applied law for that particular industries as of now or within the existing labor law which are implied, which are in the which are active. So in that case, we are we required to submit around 22 numbers of different returns. But when these four new codes will be Implementers, so there will be only four returns which are required to be implemented by the employer to the agencies. Then it comes to the license also. So then the license it will be increased. However, as of now, there are the two licenses which are required to be obtained. But when these four new codes will be implemented, there are the three. Then the different types of the displays also. Like the you have to you have required to display the different abstract as well as the notices. So that will be reduced for the 20 the for 13 number out of 20. Then so that is registration. So they are earlier, there are required the five types of the registration under the different existing level. When these four new codes will be implemented, so you require to obtain the three registration. Then it comes to the remittance. So it will be the same remain related to the ESIC and EPF. So if you see in these four uh, five number of the perspective and the specifically the area, so it you can say that it is the biggest reform because the documentation work has been reduced. But now when it will be implemented, why I'm seeing it, it will impact the industries tremendously. So here I'm sharing with you that scenario. Exactly. When we have gone through the different labor law or the existing labor law, so what is the obligation if not fulfilled? If any obligation not fulfilled, so what will be the result of that? You will be imposed with the fine or imprisonment and the cancellation of the license. Just see now. When these four new codes will be implemented, what is going to be happen? It will have the tremendous impact on the organization as well as the their finance also. How? So just just see it. What is happening there specifically? When any obligations which the employer are not fulfilling, it is going to be more strict now, and that are not fulfilling. If you see the in the preview or provision of the wage code 2019, so there are the four existing level of which has been merged with this new code on wage 2019. So the provision of the fine, if any obligation not fulfilled, that not fulfilled by the employer in the existing provision of the law, so they are the minimum fine which can be imposed. That is the 500 rupees and maximum it is 20,000 rupees. And further, there is the provision of imprisonment that is up to six months only. It is as per the existing labor law, which regulate, define, and monitor the wages, like the payment of wage at 1936, minimum wage at 1948, payment of bonus at 1965, and the equal remuneration at 1976. These four codes, which are already existing, that are merged with the new wage code. So, what is going to be changed in that? Define which was minimum 500 rupees, that is going to be increased for minimum 20,000 rupees. And maximum defined will be imposed to the employer for a single case of non-fulfillment of the obligation 50,000 rupees. However, the provision of the imprisonment has been removed from the Wage on code related to the law defining the wages specifically. But now just imagine if there are only the, just only the five number of the obligation or the non-conformity available when the regulation of the law or the prescribed rule of the law not fulfilled by the employer for those five non-compliant or non-fulfilled obligation. It will impose as a, in the form of fine around two lakhs and fifty thousand rupees. 
for an employer related to the code or related to the regulation which define the wages and the specifically they find wages related regulation the employer did not fulfill and in the organization there are around 29 or 30 different law or the existing law which has been covered and which has been merged with the new codes if under this different labor law there are the many numbers of obligations will be happen for the employer so it will be impact the employer financially in the case of the minimum wage it will impact the at least minimum to minimum five cases if we consider so two lakh two and two lakh and fifty thousand rupees will be imposed to the employer and second it is only the scenario of the wage code 2019 then the another code is the industrial relation code 2020 where the different existing labor law has been more than that earlier means in the existing labor law like the employment standing order and the industrial dispute act and the trade union act so there are no provision of the imprisonment but when the the industrial relation code 2020 will be implemented so employer can be imposed with the or charged with the imprisonment also punished with the imprisonment also for one year and the fine which was only minimum the 100 rupees can be imposed to an employer for non-fulfillment of the obligation that has been increased for 50,000 rupees minimum and a maximum 2 lakh rupees. Now, in this similar example, just consider or imagine if only the five number of the obligation not fulfilled by the employer. So it will be 10 lakh rupees fine imposed to the employer, 10 lakh rupees and also provision of the imprisonment of one year will be imposed in the future when these four new codes will be implemented then it comes to the another one the third code that is the social security code 2020 so under the social security code 2020 there are the existing different labor law like the employee compensation act the employee state insurance the employee provident fund and the miscellaneous provision act 1952 then the maternity benefit payment of gratuity the bonding building and other construction workers says, as well as the employment exchange so that are the different existing labor law which has been merged in the social security because these are the law which regulate monitor and define the social security for the industrial worker if you see under these different types of the existing labor law there is a provision of the fine so that provision is like minimum 500 rupees and maximum twenty thousand rupees which can be imposed to the employer and there is a provision of the that the imprisonment if any obligation does not fulfill so minimum three months and maximum three year period but when these four new codes will be implemented and specifically we are talking about the social security code 2020 so they are the minimum fine that will be imposed 50 000 rupees and a maximum one lakh rupees so now consider for example there will be the five number of the non obligation or the obligation does not fulfilled by the employer so there will be the five lakh rupees fine imposed to the employer and the imprisonment that is still set up till three years it can be happened so now but i can say and you have specifically understood about the new codes how they are going to the impact the industries specifically the employer they will how do the cancellation of the license is not prescribed there but further their businesses will be impacted their image will be impacted and most probably the finance and their financial condition will be impacted when for a non-fulfilling of a small requirement under the law it will impact immediately from a single point of time 10 lakh rupees does your employer will pay that no and the neighbor that's why you need to be well prepared for the future make yourself ready and before that you need to assess your organization what you are going to change and put the to the changes for because the law are going to be more strict in the future however in the existing with the existing law because there are the minimum number of the fine how much the fine the minimum amount of the fine are there and that's why the organization 
the representative of the organization they had adopted the different practices which are wrong but in the future that practices will not work for you have to comply with the law as required by the law it has been prescribed in the norm so for that you need to be prepared for yourself as well as for the organization also then it comes to the new labor code number four the occupational safety health and working condition code 2020 so there are also seven to eight number of the existing labor law which has been merged under the occupational safety health and working condition code 2020 these are the law specifically defining the working hour condition of employment in the organization so that is your factories act that is your mine act dock workers building and other construction workers then the contract to labor the interstate migrant worker and the sale promotion these all are merged in the new labor board on the occupational safety health and working condition 2020 the name has been given the code 2020 but there is nothing new the existing level are there small reform has been done and introduced in that that has been merged in the new codes but exactly what is going to happen when there these obligations are not fulfilled which we have discussed in the previous section and there in the previous section there as for the existing labor law which has been merged under this code so that is the provision of the fine minimum 500 rupees and maximum one lakh rupees and the imprisonment there is the up till two years only when this code will be implemented that fine which is within the existing labor law it will be imposed for 500 rupees only that is minimum 50 000 rupees and maximum five lakh rupees and the imprisonment it is for two years definitely when there are the obligation not fulfilled but further now imagine if there are the five number of the obligation not fulfilled it will be impact immediately lose 25 lakh rupees from the pocket of your employer management staff for your employer can your employer lose 25 lakh rupees in just a one day of inspection when the employer that the agency come to your premises and inspect and then the different type of the obligations which consider as known fulfilled or they will give you the non conformity for those obligations which is required to be fulfilled so that's why the new laws are going to be changed your organization tremendously so that you need to be well prepared for that and be ready for the future but now here is something for you when these four new codes will be implemented what you need to be do and what you need to be prepared for that so here when we summarize all those four codes so there are the something which you require to be definitely look into your organization the, your existing practices so that you can start with the, the new application of the new codes when they are going to be implemented so first of all when you can say that that is the biggest reform so there is only the one single reform that is related to the definition of the wage however earlier there are the different type of the existing labor act that defining the wage for the different labor laws so as for the existing different labor laws, so there we found 16 number of the different definition for the wage. But the one biggest reform, which we can say that under the four new codes, so that the one uniform definition was provided for all the codes, so that the definition specifically where there will be the basic pay, business allowances, and the retaining allowances. When it comes to the wage related to the law, it comes the gross wages. So there will be one, the basic pay including the dearness allowances and the retaining allowances which you are paying to them and secondly that it has been introduced or it has been that the concept has been provided and introduced in the wage code 2019 that the wages which has given the uniform definition considering the four new codes that wage all the law 
or complying with the norms of the law, that should be the basic page. And now the all compliance related to the law will be done on the basic pay. But that basic pay will be 50% of your gross wages. When this new concept will be implemented, because this is going to be implemented from the first April 2022, you need to be assured how you have to make changes in your salary structure. When this new norms or new concept of the wages will be implemented, it will be impact the employer and employee both. How? Financially specifically, it will be for employer, the financial or the cost impact will be happen. The, their cost will be increased in the connection of the wages or you are paying to the employer. And but for the employee, when you are paying, your cost is going to be increased. But in that similar case, the payout for the employee that are going to be reduced or decreased. Specifically, the take-home salary will be reduced for the employee when this, this new concept of the wage will be implemented. Then after, there are provided a separate definition for the worker and the employees. And there are also the one new concept has been introduced, that is the floor wages. Every five years, the central government will revise or define a specific floor wage. And based on that, the state, they will define their minimum wage. Then the different definition has been given the contractor and the contract labor separately. The provision of the related to the making of payment under the provision of the payment of wage that has been given or prescribed the similar to all the employment number and then there are also provided the provision that every organization they should be the grievance threat committee where they are the 20 or more worker in any organization the provision of aggregator has been introduced in that then the the one someone was asking the question of also related to that the gratuity that has been reduced for three years it is not implemented as of now but it is in the new codes that the gratuity period has been reduced when these four codes will be implemented specifically, the Social Security Code 2020, that the gratuity period will be reduced for three years. So gratuity will be applicable for the three years. But Gratuity Act 1972 is providing the statutory right to the employee that they can claim the gratuity from the employer. That is still there, but now the period has been reduced. Then you want another concept which we have which has been introduced or accepted under the new wage code, that the new code or the new labor code so that are the free annual health checkup for every individual employee by the employer and also there are the provision of the different type of the leave already available but the new codes that has been systematized that no leave can be left now and every leave which you are providing and which is applicable as per the law to the employee, you can carry forward them, but at least at the end, you need to be make them pay out or and cash them. And specifically, it has been allowed that the employment of a woman after 7 p.m. or before 6 a.m. has been allowed, but you need to assure their to and fro with safety and security. It is the responsibility of the employer, as well as when you are engaging any employee on overtime, you need to be get the consent from that individual employee. You cannot pressurize him to do overtime. However, there is also the provision related to the 12 hour uh, that the 12 hour concept accepted under the provision of the law, but the separate provision has been done for that how you can introduce that concept. So this was all about related to the section one, but here is something for you, how you have to prepare yourself for the future. We have prepared one representation for you so that you can implement that in your organization after completion of this master program to date. So here are some presentation we have specifically prepared for you, what you have to do and specifically what you need to do when the new concept of the wage you are going to implement in you in your organization that related to the wage specific so here is the one concept we have prepared specifically for you so this is the as per the new 
not new it is the existing minimum wage act 1948 the wage that has been prescribed by the state specific for the organization so there is the specifically the wage and there is the dns allowances and the total wages also that is the minimum wage defined but now just check out that what is going to be happen in the different provision of the statutory requirement so specifically first of all it come to the provision related to the provident fund what is going to be happen as per the existing norm as the existing practices of the law so there are the different types of the component available and furthermore what you have to pay in the case of when the concept of the 50% of the basic wage of the gross wage you have to implement that what is going to be happen and how it will impact the financial condition of the employer so as per the existing norms related to the epf and the wage definition so there is also the selling also providing of the 15000 rupees so there for the basic wage you are paying to the contribution or deducting on the basic pay so in that case as of now you are paying just for the 960 rupees for example but when this 50% of the wage and the minimum wage concept will be provided the minimum wage that is all we consider you cannot bifurcate that and then further it will be impact you have to pay the contribution for the four 1440 rupees in the second scenario if you see you are paying the total wages for the 20000 rupees and the capping is 15000 rupees and based on that you are paying the 15 uh, that's 1800 rupees but in the basic wage you are paying them the minimum wage and that is above than the 50% of the wages you are paying to them so in that case you are you have to pay the lesser amount than the as per the existing condition of the labor law you are paying then further each come to the scenario if you are paying like the, the wages you are paying to the 24000 rupees as per the existing practice or the contribution which you are directing for the epfo that you have to pay the 1800 rupees contribution for the epf but when this concept of the new wage system will be implemented your cost will be reduced then similarly if you are engaging the international worker in that case you your contribution also be reduced because that the wage which is considered for the related to the conceptualization as well as the contribution that is the loss perspective that is the 50 percent so in that case if you are paying the six lakh rupees for the international worker that the as of now if the, we do not have the social security treaty with the country you need to be deduct the contribution on the whole amount but further when this new concept of the 50 percent wage will be basic wage will be introduced or implemented with the new code so that you have to detect it the from the 50 percent of your gross wages so it will also get relief for the it will also provide the relief for the employer but now the scenario is there where we have discussed that the it will impact financially to the employer as well as the employer it will increase the cost for the employer because most of the organization there is the maximum number of the workforce that come in the minimum wage range so when it is the minimum wage range so in that case the employer cost is going to be increased and also as of now the minimum range of the wages range for the employee numbers or strength so there salary or their income salary is going to be reduced when this new concept will be implemented then it comes to the like gratuity cases what is happening so in the gratuity cases where as for the existing that the gratuity act the payment will be done based on the basic and whatever is the basic is as of now so you have to calculate that but further when the basic will be 50 percent of the gross wage so the gratuity amount will be increased similarly in the when there are the certain cases of the retrenchment closure when you have to pay the employer need to be paid the compensation as per the existing level of the gross or specifically the industrial dispute and compensation act the gross wages will be calculated for the compensation when this concept of the 50 percent wage 
or basic of the wage will be introduced so the compensation part it will be reduce the cost for the employer similarly under the provision of the like factories act and then the minimum wage for that however as of now the basic wage is specifically the whatever is the minimum wage defined that you need to be considered when this new code will be implemented you have to introduce the 50 percent whatever the wage you are providing to the any worker specifically so that you need to be introduced or divide those total gross wage into two parts one is your basic and well as other your retirement or as well as your retaining allowances so that should be the 50 percent of the law and then after you have also introduced the worker who are coming or who are in the purview of the income tax so for that you need to be introduce a tax friendly structure for them so that we have prepared one presentation for that so that how you can based on the new norms and the new condition of the wage you can implement a new wage structure which will be the cost friendly for your employer or specifically the tax friendly for your employer so that less tax can be deducted from their wages as well as from their salary so this is the template which will be received to you as it is you can introduce you can utilize it for your future learning as well as to understanding the structure specifically of your organization and then getting into the implementation of the new wage concept in your organization this was all about the section one where we have covered specifically a different perspective related to the existing labor law its issue and the pain point and then secondly we have discussed about the future perspective of the four new codes, what is happening. The four new codes are not nothing new in that, that is the merger of the existing labor law and the little bit has been changes done and a new concept has been introduced there, but it is going to be impact the employer tremendously. So this is all about this section one. So in this live master session on the labor law compliance management for the future perspective of the Indian labor law and its readiness as well as the preparedness for future. So in the previous section, we have discussed about the impact of the labor law on the industries as well as the industrial perspective, impact of the existing labor law. However, they are not the big amount of the fine imposed to the employer so that's why it is also the opportunity for the representative that they have been practiced the different types of the bad practices in the organization but when these four new codes will be implemented what is going to be happen that the big bad practices that will be re, re, that will be removed automatically when there will be any fine imposed or any non-conformity will be given by the authorities for that you will be imposed with the fine because that the inspector which come to your organization for inspection they will ask you that similar amount of the fine however as of the now the existing practices you can that the organization have started some packets as some 2000 rupees monthly or maximum 10,000 rupees in a year but in the future, when the fine will be in the huge amount, you cannot give that amount as a bribe for that. You need to assure the compliance in your organization. So for that, what you have to do, how you have to develop a system in your organization that I'm sharing here with you. So that is the full practical perspective as well as the system where you are going to be learn for the future which you require to be implemented in your organization to managing the every requirement related to the labor law and the statutory requirement in your organization so that you can comply all the regulation of the applied labor law in your organization so for that this system we have developed specifically on the three different tiers that 
when you are learning the system and the you are implementing in the organization you are strengthening your future hr career base and that will also developing with you the some unique selling proposition for the future that will also help you to progress in the future in your level of compliance profession career as well as the hr career who are dealing with the level of it is mandatory when you are the hr professional you should well aware about the labor law because the labor law they are defining the condition of employment in the industries so now what you have to do and how this three pillar of the labor law compliance and management portfolio work and what you have to do so in the first first pillar we are going to discuss and learn about the three layer of structure what is this three layer of structure and how it will help you to develop a systematic compliance management portfolio in your organization so first of all when one business is started and you commence a business in a premises or somewhere else so that you need to obtain certain license for commencing of a business so in the scenario there are the particular when you are obtain a license for your premises when that license has been granted to you there are provided the instruction that you need to be follow certain provision of the law so there it doesn't mean that all the existing labor law that you require be obtain the registration license and approval so there is for one two and three there is the impacting and the different type of the industry aspect but further the other law that are the secondary law and connected with these approval you are mandatory need to be assured in your organization so that's why like if we talk about the factory specifically so when we when you start a factory and that commencing the businesses in that premises as a factory you need to obtain the factory license when you obtain the factory license so then there are providing the instruction also you need to be follow the long list has been provided there you have to follow the other rules also according to these rules and what you have to do we have divided the system in the three different layers and that layers are mandatory for complying with the regulation of the labor law compliance when you establish that layer in your organization you can understand the every requirement or the specifically norms of the law which you require to be implement in your organization so it comes with the first that the approvals which you require to obtain for the particular employee under the particular employee in, that the employer or the establishment specifically under the that the particular labor law when that approval has been granted to you then it is provided the different type of the regulation and instruction which you have required to be fulfilled or facilitated in your organization that all those instruction and regulation you need to be maintain the record for that how the agency can assure you are complying with them so you need to be maintain the record for that this is the second layer and third layer then you are maintaining the record how the agency will assure that you are definitely assuring these compliances and the instruction that has been granted that has been provided during the granting of such approval so that you need to be submit the certain periodic return on complying of the norms or the regulation of the law provided specifically and that the sharing the status in form of the different returns so this is the your three layer of structure so first whatever the law is applicable to your organization you need to be divided that in the three different layers what are the approval required for that particular law what are the records you have to maintain that and then what are the compliance status under the different or under that particular labor law which is applied to your organization that you need to be submit to the authority periodically to assure that you are complying with the regulation which has been provided now it come to that how you can do that so there we have specifically prepared one template for you which you can utilize and implement in your organization as it is so that it will be easy for you to implement this
labor law compliance management portfolio in your organization and as a system for complying with every regulation of the labor law. So now it comes to that how you have to do that, how you have to define specifically these three layers of the applied and applicable labor law for your organization. So here we have prepared one master template for you that will help you to what are the different three layers required under the different labor law. So we have specifically prepared it as for the different state specific law. However, the laws are majorly the central law in India, then after one and two law only the state specific. Then after the state has been provided right to they can amend the central law according and the central rule law are only the center then after that has been provided the rule specifically and the law provided the rights to the state that the state can introduce their own rule however practically the rule which has been accepted and adopted by the state there are no bigger and the major different difference between the central law as well as central rule as well as the state rule there are only the one and two maximum which we have observed in the different type of the labor law. So there are the three types of the difference between the central rule as well as the state rule. Number one, when you are going to apply for any approval or registration under the law, so state law is saying that there is a specifically the change in the fee. So that will be fee will be separate or different in different states second one the form numbers however in the state rule there are the different form in the categorization serial has been given the state they have changed their serial number into their as for their own perspective and third the requirement or the data required however the data in the central rule that will be in the different forms or in the state rule they have been require that data in the one or two form. So there will be the increased number of the different serials as well as the form specifically or the reduced number. That is the difference between the state rules and the central rule. However, it is also the difference from the state to state also. However, the concept we are developing here that you can develop it, you can implement it in the every state of India. So for that, what we have done specifically for you, here we have prepared a month master template for you. That will also help you here. In the beginning, I have also told with you that you will also develop a concept or you will also develop a carrier USB for you. How you can develop that? Specifically, when there are the compliance specialists or leader, they should have the four success quality. Note down these four success qualities, but a labor law compliance specialist required in the future, it will be the major requirement for you, as well as now, when these four new codes will be implemented, the people who are specialists in the labor law, they will be get preferred for the HR jobs, and it will also becoming the major required field for the industries now. So no doubt these four skills, which I'm sharing with you for the level of compliance specialist. One, he should be vigilant. He should be foresighted that he should be responsible as well as he should be accountable. And that whole system, which we are learning here, that is based on these four skills of the level of compliance specialist. So that's why I have mentioned in the beginning, when you are tomorrow going to back in your office, you should implement this system and that system will tell that you have developed a new system and a new concept of doing a job or performing your role as a system in your organization. So what is here exactly what you have to do? We have prepared one master template for you that will help you make you the vigilant one. So how to become vigilant? When everything which is required broadly should be on your fingertips. How that you can make every requirement of the labor law on your fingertips, that is the one most important template we have prepared for you that I'm sharing here with you that template specifically.
So just give me a while. I'm sharing the template with you, what you have to do and how you can become more vigilant in the future related to the labor law management or the required norms of your or that the applied labor law in the organization, which is applicable for your organization. So just check it here. So here, this is a one of the broad master template which we have prepared for you specifically, which is based on the three layer of structure. First one, the different types of the approval required. So, uh, for example, which we have discussed in the beginning that we will exemplify as a factory. If you are working in a factory and you are providing services to the factory, so there are the different types of the approval which you require. One, there should be the factory license. Then after the factories, they have the hazard processes for that you required to get the non-objection certificate and consent under the air water and the hazard based authorization for you. Then there you required the building plan approval. Then there you also required the non objection certification related to the fire. Then there are the, your ESIC and EPF, it is mandatory. Then there are the registration and the contract labor. If you are engaging the third party employee in your organization, then your premises may be also leased or if that is the own premises, you also require the agreement for that if that is the lease. So these are the different types of the approval. So what you have to do? So this is the master template which you can print on the A3 page and stick it in front of your desk so that everything which is required for your organization under the provision of the applied or applicable labor law that you have to assure that. If you are engaging with the multiple locations, so that you can incorporate or change accordingly in this format. And then what you have to do further in that and what are the points and what are the steps or action required in the future and where you are as for existing. So you can put that also that in the, in the marks point so that you should get every insight related to the, your future steps. And if there is something is not complied with, you can comply that before the timeline has been provided and given. Then this is all about the different types of the approval you require to obtain. It is not for the factories also if we, you are working in the shop and commercial. So there are the different types of the approval which you required also. Even that the fire NOC also required, EPF also required, ESIC also required, that the registration and the certificate, that the contract level also required, that the lease registration is also required for that. And when you have obtained all of these different approvals which is required so then after there is a provided instruction you have to follow you have to facilitate the different provision in your own however majorly the objective of the indian labor law that is that is the that are the three objective major objective the health welfare and safety which you have to be maintain and facilitate in your organization and all the labor law that are specifically rounded and around the, these three objectives. So for that, you have to now facilitate all these provision of these all approvals which you have obtained. So what you have to do for that? For that, you have to, there are the specific, the prescribed formats where you have to maintain the records of those different or the applicable regulation under the different law which are applicable to your organization. So the, what are the different type of the records you have to maintain so that you need to be incorporate here, then you have to be updated that their timeline you should incorporate the data. Timeline means you have to give a frequency for that and there is essentially one timeline or due date you have to implement. However, that due date in this master template you have to require specifically for the required to submit those records to the agencies. And when it is required and prescribed to maintain, so you need to be defined the 
frequency and a due date for that. Like for example, if there are the, you are working with the factory, so there are the different type of record you have to maintain. Means there are the specifically the master record we need to prepare and maintain the record of every individual their attending or not attending their duties so that in the master role you need to be maintained. However, in the organization you are you have applied this biometric system, but you have also to check them and prepare the master role for the further compliance because compliance is a required the master role. So that is the frequency is daily, you need to be updated that daily. Then there are the other certain records like you are making or you are specifically providing the certain leave to your employee so that you need to be maintained certain records how many leads you have provided to an employee in the month that should be bi-monthly before seven so that frequency you have to be it is we have specifically prepared it for you just you have to check out it as per the state specifically and then you have to incorporate in that. Then different types of the display which is required, so that is required their frequency. Even that is the notice board or the notice which you required under the fact that it's for, uh, that eleven a year you have provided the different types of the information. So that is when there are any changes you have to update that. Then there are the notice period for the work worker specifically where you have to update the numbers of the employee that is inside your premises for the day you have to update that on daily basis then this different or abstract which is applied that is applicable for every organization you have to display that that is the your frequency of one time who is the responsible person for that you have to assure that so accordingly you have to incorporate that into this master format then the different type. Now you have maintained the record as for the required perspective. Then you have to go to the third layer. So third layer is specifically that the different types of the records you have to submit to the authority in the form of the return. Or that is also the status of the compliance. You have to share with the authorities. You are complying with the norms which has been instructed when the resolution or the approval has been granted. So for that, as for the different law, what are the compliance you have to be submit in the different forms which has been prescribed under the law within their due dates you have to be submit. Or you have to incorporate that as per the law, as per the frequency and the timeline in which month or what date you have to prepare that so that this master template you can utilize and you can or stick it at your desktop so that every thing which is required to be do in the future that you can make it possible on your fingertips when you display this master template before your eyes as well as as your desktop so this is the a3 pages you can print out it after making the changes as for your state specific norms there may be the change in these days and then there are the little bit changes in these forms also. So then you can utilize this format as is, and then you have to update it on time to time so that you cannot skip any one particular or any smallest or smaller part because in the future, the level of compliance is going to be very, very important task for the HR people. So this is one of the template which you will receive for the direct implementation at your organization. So how you will prepare this, so that is provided you have to implement, but the basically you have to do for that to be exactly the background task. That is a bigger one task, what you have to do for that, so that I'm sharing here in the next step or the next video. So we have discussed here the three layer of the your structure. So you have understood about the what is exactly the structure of the labor law compliance portfolio and specifically what you have to do. And that structure, when you implemented this master task master or the template in your organization, it will help you to make you more vigilant. What you have to do next? So that you can assure everything before time and it will also make you be more vigilant 
for future what are the action you have to do but making you furthermore vigilant for that you have to go with a process of how you have to comply with the different norms but what we have seen we have been with the different organization also and there we have seen that the who are the people responsible or who has been appointed for the complying with the regulation of the existing labor law they comply the law norms for their employer or their management but exactly when there will be the agencies will visit to your premises for assessing your compliance status during that time your result of the compliance preparation will be zero because you are preparing your compliance for showing your management because your management don't know how to comply with they only see what you share with them but exactly when you have to comply and when you have to build your credibility develop the self branding you have to work with the system and specifically you have to comply the norm not for your employer on behalf of your employer to the agencies who are going to be regulate and monitor these requirement and these law specific so here specifically i am sharing one tool with you that tool is based on how the agency specifically work and what is their procedure and working style specifically for the labor law compliance and how they comply with the and what are the requirement when you work with this tool as you implement this tool in your organization so that will help you specifically to get the compliance as per the agency's requirement if they give you some non conformity you can counter with that but i'm sharing with you so before that what you have to do we have here prepared one broad template for you that template will help you to assess your organization the current stage and the status of your organization is that compliant with the requirement of the applicable labor law so for that what you have to do so here we have prepared one master assessment to checklist for the every organization where maximum number of the laws are applied to the industries that you can utilize for your organization their current status assess that what is available in your organization and then in the future what you require to be update as well as what you require to be complied with so this is one of the master checklist which we have prepared based on the government regulation and the agencies how they work in how they inspect an organization and industries based on the regulation of the law so this is the broadly we have covered near about 30 number of the existing labor law which applied to the maximum number of the organization so their different regulation requirement what you have to do under that and what is required for those industry so all that thing with the sections and the different rule under the different law which we have incorporated in that master data check so that what you have to do where you can utilize this so you can utilize this specifically when you have to evaluate the current status of your organization that is compliant under the regulation of the law specifically or not so how you have to go with this master template as well as the master techniques so that is provided if in the for example if we talk about the case of the factory so there are the different existing labor law maximum number of the labor law are applied to the factory so that's why we are covering the broadly the maximum number where the law are compliant so it is specifically what are the different requirements for the complying with the norms of the law so that has been incorporated in this master checklist so like that there is specifically when you have something like in the organization you have to construct something inside or you have to extend the factory or building so what you have to do for that so for that what you need to do that and in which section that is provided and what is your action for that who will be the responsible person you have to decide for that 
and specifically who, uh, what will be the department and who will the responsible person what is their frequency what and when you should do that so that you can comply with the everything what is required for your organization and then if required the certain specific action you need to be done for that and what is your next action for that what you have to do and then you can also take the concern the persons or the different department who will have the different responsibility related to such action their consents and get their signature so that they can also be bounded for that assuring everything when it has been required the frequency the politically the time being you can decide when it is required and then in the action you can give the target also and making the consents with the people to whom or with whom you have engaging with certain compliance a requirement you are going to be fulfilled so then what you have to do with this you have to go with your organization and check out based on this master template what is lacking as per the part of the existing law and its compliance in the organization we have incorporated all that in this master template and that you can evaluate the current status of your organization and the future also it will help you what is required however there in the future the section and rule number will be changed because here we have covered the around 25 or 26 number of the existing level law in this template but in the future that will be only the four different codes only and under these codes what are the sections so that required to be changed but as of the existing status of your organization, you can utilize this template for from tomorrow and assess the existing state of your compliance in your organization. So this is the another template which will be received to you as it is for your implementation, learning, and future references. So now it come to um, now that we the i've shared with you during the first one that the master task which you have to display that before that you need to be follow the one process how you have to assure the compliance in your organization so for that we have designed the three layer of compliance process so what is that in the first layer the master template we have i've shared with you where we have covered around 25 and more than 25 number of the existing level law you have to utilize that as a master template and then you have to check out what is the compliance status in your organization what is lacking for that when you identify that the actual status of the compliance what is that before that then after you have to identify the area which are lacking, which is not compliant. So for that, you have to go with the first layer of the compliance process. So there you have to make now the action plan. How you have to complete the task related to the complying the norms and what is applicable for your organization under the different level. So here is the another tool for you that you can implement and that is ready to use or references which you can utilize what you have to do so here i'm sharing with you but the first stage what you have to do so at the first stage you are going to prepare our internal compliance for your organization that compliance you can do by yourself or specifically my idea is here or suggestion for you that you can introduce a compliance committee in your organization so that the people in that they should be the top level one or two people of your organization so that they can guide you and they can give you the third party viewpoint related to the law and that the master template which we have shared with you which are going to be shared with you in the process which i have shared so they can also utilize it as a booklet or the standard booklet where you can also share with them and then they can assess the requirement specifically the compliance on existing compliance of your organization when you have identified all those requirements and which is a non-compliant so what you have to do for the next so that is your master action plan so whatever as for the different level of which you have identified that are non-compliant for your organization then you have to 
pick up all those non compliant area under the different applicable labor law then you have to prepare a master action plan so here that is the you have to this is the template which where you have to only incorporate the requirement and what you require to be summit what you require to be do and then the due date this due date should not be as per the government so this due date you need to be introduced or implement or incorporate when you require to comply with all those norms and when you require to be complete then you have to decide actually the plan when you are going to be complete that particular task considering of your time or the jobs and then you have also marked the actual status when you have complied then you have actually completed that task it is before the timeline or it is after the timeline if it is after the timeline you have to give me some actions here or if it is delays you have to give some remarks for that and some reasons for that or if it is before that what you have achieved that you can also give the there you return on your time invested your action investment and implementation implementing this portfolio in your organization how much time it has been saved for you working to comply with the norms and regulation of the labor law or existing labor law in your organization so then every aspect whatever the aspect of which is not complied based on the master template which i have shared with you you have to pick all those points and put in this master complaint that the master template and the master action planner where you have to check out the particularly you have to define a due date then within due date when you have to comply with however here you can also write some targets and action steps also then actually when you have implemented that when you have completed that so that you have to be mark here so it will make you more foresighted what you have to do it will also give you the insight of what task you can complete in what amount of time so it will also improve your productivity this template you cannot utilize the system you cannot just utilize for the compliance also understanding the system the same system you can implement for the other jobs too and this template will make you more foresighted what you have to do how you have to achieve that and what are your next steps and what is your target and then this is the template which will be received to as it after completion of this master class today then it come to the second one the second layer what you have to do for that as we have discussed the three layer of the process here you have to do internally you can do it by yourself assessing on the this master template which i have shared in the beginning then this also you can implement whatever the gaps you identify that you have to put in the master planner and then after you can check out all that and comply that within the time and second it come to the second layer when they you are going with the agency's compliance agency compliance is a two type of agency compliance sometimes the organization be engaged the third party and if you are at the service provided so this template will help you to give the quality services to your organization and secondly if you are the employer itself and you can utilize it for the complying with the that the law for your agency like you are engaging the vendors you are engaging the contractor so it is the responsibility of the principal employer that you need to assure all the compliance of your vendors too means for your contractor it is your responsibility and the law has been made the principal employer responsible and it should be in the supervision of the principal employer so for that what you have to do we have prepared one template which you can utilize for your agencies or your vendors also if you are a subject right you can do it for your client so what is that i'm sharing it here with you now so so this is another template which you can utilize for there are the different type of the approval required by the agencies also as well as by the employer also so that you can uh, that the incorporate it here however it is for the we have prepared it specifically for the vendors also perspective considering that the principal employer you have to evaluate you have to comply and you have to inspect the compliance status of your contractor as well as the vendor so as per the contract level at 1970 
what is the required the mandatory approval for the employer also the different like that under uh, the contract level than the uh, that to the epfo then the esic so that the different types of the approval and compliance are required so that you need to be incorporated in that then what is the due requirement when it is required then what is the status of the current compliance under the provision of the law then what is your finding then what is your next action or that your agency or your party required to do and fulfill so all that you need to be incorporated in that so that then after the next step what you have to do that you have to introduce the periodical compliance assessment till then your compliance should not be fully assured and fully compliant so for that ideally practice is that so you need to be introduced for your vendors the quarterly inspection or the audit system so that they can comply all the regulation for the consider or the required level of compliance for the vendors you party as well as for the client so this is another template which will use to you as it is so you need to be utilize it for finding of the current status of your vendors and the parties then it comes to the third one the most important part of your level of compliance process that is specifically as i mentioned that the most of the organization what is happening so the representative of the employer they prepare or they comply the law regulation or the level of compliance of regulation specifically for their employer but exactly when you are assuring or for the future you have to comply the regulation based on the agency's system so for that we have specifically arranged one of the internal tool of the agencies how they work and based on that we have prepared this master checklist for you so that you can assure 100% compliance and when you utilize this system in your organization that the agencies can not question you if they question you you can counter them based on their internal system so for that what we have done we have arranged some template of the government agencies for your understanding and implementation however it is applicable in all the state that has been available in the organization but definitely you can get that from there or not but here the tool which we are providing it is similar in all the states so you can utilize it for your states also however it is one of the state specific but the system in all the governmental agency in the every state that are same so that you can refer it further so it is just assuring that specifically what we have given in the first layer or before that the master template how you have to evaluate the current status of your organization so they have the system there also this will be reached to you as it is for your understanding for your learning for the different types of the level law what is required what is there the different categories provided for the compliance and management by the agency specifically and who will be the responsible for escalating of the different cases and the non compliances for that what you need to be assured so that has been everything prescribed in that what the system the agencies have how they will inspect the provision or the facilitation of the different applicable level of for your organization and similarly that one thing which i want to share with you that i have shared with you the master template and that template is specifically the checklist which we have prepared for you when you have to assess your organization so that is based on this master system of the government agencies the different section what is required and the rules specifically what is required there how it is for the state specific similarly you have to check that how will the detail and requirement are same but the rule may be different in the state rule number may be different in the state you have to check it for the state and the requirement are similar and same in all the state so based on this master and the system of the government agencies we have prepared that master checklist so that it will be easy for you to evaluate the current status of your organization so this is the one of the master scope and master tool for you if you implement the system in your organization when the government agencies come to come for inspection in your organization 
So they cannot counter you and they cannot give you the any non-conformity that you do know. You does not have comply with you. Because for the future, you need to be implemented. If you are not implementing, if any non-conformity is there, the agency will be charged you too much amount. Which we have seen during the section one, where we have seen or we have discussed about the overview of the new labor code, which are going to be implemented from the April 2022. So here, how the agencies they work, what are the different sections provided, and what are the regulation requirements for that, how it will be, how they will be evaluate and inspect the requirement with the compliance regulation provided under different applicable labor law that will be based on this internal system. However, this is same in all the state specific. It is possible if you can get it, otherwise as a reference, you can utilize it here. So in the pillar number two, there is the three layer of compliance process. It is the main part of this labor law compliance management portfolio, which you are developing in your organization that will help you in the future, how to comply and assuring your organization that it is fully compliant. But you have to learn this and you have to evaluate your organization and then you have to deep inside your need to be liberal. And this system will also help you develop you within you the four essential success skill of the liberal compliance specialist. That is making you more vigilant, foresighted, responsible, as well as accountable. And when you have these four qualities within you, it will rebuild your credibility in your organization as an individual, as a department. And secondly, it will also help you to make your professional brand as a level of compliance specialist. And in the future, this is going to be the major requirement for the people who are in the services or profession of dealing with the HR as well as the level law. So this was all about the pillar number two. Now it comes to the pillar number third. Pillar number third is specifically that the reporting. Now you have developed the system, you have implemented the system, you have complied with the system. So, as I mentioned in the beginning, why the compliance failed in the maximum number of the organization when the, in the government inspection happened for the organization. That is why, because most of the organization they consider or the specifically the professional who are into the uh, that uh, specifically the dealing with the labor law compliance they consider it the non-functional job only the record the job and the maintaining of the record that's why when they or they specifically comply the regulation of the law for their employer because you have to just show it to your employer that they don't know exactly what is the requirement of the compliance. What you are showing to them, so they are believing on you. When there is the comment that the inspection actually happened, then mostly the compliance failed in the organization. So now this is the third pillar. Exactly what to, if you implementing this system, which I've shared with, so you do not have to report and share with you um, that the management that you have done this thing, it will be automatically report your working and the system you can develop in your organization to your management. But here, I'm also shading you one of the two, how you can report your working as a compliance leader in the very specific time, because the employer or the management team, they are the money focusing people. They are the business people, they are the strategic people. So they don't have time to spend with you just to know that what you have to do, what you have to comply. It is your job. They are going to be paid with you. They are going to, they are paying with you for this job. It is your responsibility to assure it as well. But then it is required to be reported. For some time, it is, you have to report that, but you do not have to share with them. You have done this thing, you have done that thing, but you have to just report. Different status. 
So how do I appreciate with that? There are the different types of the platforms also. There are the different monthly meetings where you require six monthly meeting, half yearly, quarterly meeting. We need to share the status of your activities or achieving the goal of the organization. However, every activity that is related to the achieving of the organization goal. So compliance is also one of the organization goals because every law that is making the employer as a responsible person. If any obligation not fulfilled by the employer, it will not impact you as a representative of the employer. It will impact the employer because he will be imposed with the fine. He will be get. He will be punished with the imprisonment if the obligation are not and his business will be impact if the license will be cancelled. That's why in the beginning I have said that the labor law compliance is the biggest pain for the employer till now and in the future it is going to be more bigger. That, that's why in the future the, the people who have specialists in the labor law compliance and specifically assuring the compliance of the labor law that is the big, that is going to be become a bigger requirement for the organization and for the career success now. So here, the third pillar, here is specifically related to the reporting now. So what you have to do for that, how you can assure the compliance status reporting just in five to 10 minutes. That one, another tool I'm sharing with you. So just give me a, a while. So I'm sharing that with you, the one specific tool. I'm sharing how you can report you working for the your employer. So, but now finally, it is just a one small task, what you have to do for that. So here is just one pager of the presentation and the conclusion of your compliance activity you have done for the organization. This is based on the three different layers, which we have uh, that shared in the beginning, where we have started with the section number two. So there, what are the approval required? What is the status for that? If you are engaging with the different locations, then what are the records you have maintained and the different type of the status you have shared with the agencies? What is the status you can share? If there is something pending, so you can also put that in the email. So this is the just one pager template which you can utilize for presenting your activity within five to 10 minutes. It will not take more than 10 minutes to getting impressed and build that confidence of your employer. It will rebuild your credibility in the organization as well as your self of branding when you learn and implement this particular system in your organization related to the labor law and further the same system you can also implement for the other jobs too. If the employer during the presentation they ask what you have exactly done, there are something for you also available so that you can also share that whatever the queries based on that particular requirement of the three layers that you can share what is the status of that where you are exactly in the month of which what is the status for that if it's not completed so you can also share that same with the frequency the timelining and their different forms whatever is there you have just to modify it as for the your state specific this is the one and another template we will reach to you as it is so that you can implement it in your organization and also for future learning also so this is the Second layer, or the first layer related to the reporting of the labor law compliance to your management. And now it comes to the second layer. So, second layer is specifically it is as when well as required and the occasional and the manual or biannual basis for that here we have specifically prepared one of the dashboard of the hr and the labor law which is required for the every organization so that dashboard we have specifically prepared for your learning and implementing of the requirement in your organization under the different labor law there we have covered the all aspect of the applied 
applicable labor law their requirement what are the different forms are available and what is your next processes and their authority to whom you have to submit so that is made out uh, the 19 or 18 number of the different level of where we have provided this dashboard for you you can utilize it so that you do not have to refer for some that the law books or something so that's why we have prepared this master dashboard where you can refer all that cases the central law specifically so you can utilize it accordingly and also if you're checking with the state specific so you have to go with the, these two rules also but however it is for the central law so you can also take it as a reference and utilizing it for the basically understanding the concept related to the applicable level of for your organization so this template or the broad the dashboard will reach to you as it is for your learning and implementation in the future discuss about the learn about the three pillar of the statutory compliance management portfolio where it is the three layer of the structure three layer of the compliance management process and two layer of your reporting system all together this make the level of compliance portfolio which is making you the level of compliance administrator and from tomorrow you can evaluate your organization's current status and then you can working on with this tool to in the system for your organizers to assuring the compliance for the future however you require it to assess your organization based on the new concept provided related by in the different the new labor code which are going to be introduced from the april 2022 in the section two where you have developed the level of compliance management portfolio the different types of the template and tools we have shared with you that will be reached to after the completion of this program or this live session so now welcome you in the section three so specifically this is early, uh, specifically for the question and answer section before that here is one next level of the learning system for people who want to scale their career as a level of compliance specialist so for just five minutes i'm sharing that with you but it's exactly in here then after i will cover up all your questions which you have so what is going to be happen and what is this specific uh, that is a specialist program for scaling up your skill as a specialist in the level of compliance and this is the 30 day mastery level of compliance online program and that is basically dwelling of the four skills which i have discussed with you detailed and thoroughly where the participant and learner will be practically learn about the different level of what is required and their every aspect which will make you more vigilant, foresighted, building your credibility and enhancing your career as a level of compliance specialist. And what is the takeaway from this program specifically? So this program is based on the live sessions and there the participant will be learn the practical based learning in the 30 live sessions. And then after it will be provided the lifetime with you access where you can utilize those lessons for the throughout time. And when this program will be complete, thereafter also the two live session monthly to clearing of all the doubts and updates, you will also get the custody of the live templates which we will prepare live during these classes as well as the live session of the this program. And this is the certificate program and where you will get the completion certificate. And however, this is not just for the one side learning and the self paced learning, it is a hand holding coaching program where you will be learned practically, then after you will implement it at your workplace. If you are facing any issue for that, you will get back to us, we will provide the solution for you. So that's why there are the two monthly live session after this completing of those live sessions, there will be provide you the help related to your daily concern about the implementation of the labor law and the updates. Then how this program curriculum will be going forward. So this is the specifically the weekend program. And it will be happen every Saturday and Sunday. So there will be the two hours of the practical learning and 30 minutes of question and answer. So total hour of the session will every Saturday and Sunday, it will be two and a half hour, which will be started from the 8 p.m. It will be go till 10.30 p.m. So how will be the flow of this program and the daily basis it will happen? So there will be the 30 minutes of overview of the act which we are covering. And that will be based on the three layers which we have learned in this master program 
as well as then the how to collect the data, different type of the dedicated template will be prepared for that, what you required, and that all those templates will be provided for your personal custody. And the new session or new batch we are engaging from the 1st of January 2022 in the live sessions in this mastery program. And exactly what we are covering in that tier will be the 30 more than 30 plus existing level of their practical learning and the four new labor codes we will practically learn during these live session of the 30 day mastery program. So this program we have specifically divided in the different numbers of module and there will be exactly the 10 number of module but assuring there will be the more than 100 plus hours of practical learning out of that the 75 plus hours of the assured practical learning and then the additionally the question and the answer will be different from the 75 plus hours then this will be based on the R12 technique, WHPS technique. What is that? You will be learned with the, the perspective, how the data will be collected, how you have to linkage that data, and how you have to restore that data, and how you have to design or the different law weighted format we will be cover all that. And here, exactly the 33 existing level of we are going to cover, and the four new codes also. So total 37 number law will be learned during this program. So that is divided in the 10 different modules. And those modules are specifically related to the law, which regulated to define the different laws and its perspective. Like the law, which are the different law that defining the working hour condition of services and employment that we will cover in the one module. And in the other module, we are going to be all learn all those laws, the practical aspect that the law defining the wages. So what you have to practically do related to the wage, how you have to comply and how you have to assure the wages, what are the regulations for that, and what are the documentation you have required for that, how are the how you can communicate with the agencies if there is a certain cases happen related to the wages so that the template we will practically design and that will be provided to you as it is. Then the law related to the industry relation. What are the procedure on that? And in the any dispute happen, how you can deal with that? What are the provision communication if there is a labor cases, labor court cases, that the retrenchment and the closure is also there. What are the norms you have to follow for that? What are the practical communication? That what are the different types of the legal drafting are there so that you will be learn there. Then there are the different law which regulate the equality and empowerment of women that you will be learned separately. Then law related to the social security that defining monitor the social security that will be practically learned what the organization practically need to be do as well the existing level law as well the future perspective then the law related to the private level and the law related to the employment and training law related to the company specifically what you are going to be learned in that practically the job of the company secretary in this module then there will be law related to the environment and the disaster how you have to comply with that how you have to maintain certain documents in that? How you have to prepare the different communication with the organization if there are the some inspection happens, some non-obligation also that there be non and non-compliance of the conformity happen there for the non-fulfillment of the obligation. How you have to complement and that comply with that and how you have to communicate with the organization so that different documents we will practically implement and uh, learn here and design all those during these sessions. Then the new labor code separated their provision and application what you have to do all those practical aspects we will are going to learn in this program and then what is the exactly we are covering here in these 10 modules the curriculum the broad curriculum is like that in the module one the law related to the defining of the working hour condition of service and employment there we are going to discuss 10 number of the existing labor law. then the module number two where we are covering the wages so there will be three number of the existing level of we are going to be learn their practical aspect then the model number three that is the industry relation where we are thoroughly learning about the practical aspect and drafting of the different document and the different template related to the existing level law which assuring the industry relation then the law related to the equality and empowerment of a woman 
then the social security there are the five existing labor law which regulate and define the social security in the organization that we are going to be learn their perspective their application their provision what you have to do in the certain cases happen how you can communicate build the what are the different type of the templates required and the legal vetted document we are preparing live during these programs then the law related to the prohibited labor and the law related to the employment and training then law related to the companies which are regulated define the company specifically the companies act 2013 the msc development act 2006 and the income tax act 1963 these are the three major existing law which we are talking this is the freely you are getting how the company secretary they do their job however the learning for the company secretary job is required around four to five years and expend too much money for getting that the company secretary do. And you are getting here the practical learning what exactly they do. Then the law related to the environment and disaster, you will learn a practical aspect of these law. Then the, in the module number 10, you are going to learn the application and the practical provision and how you have to be ready for the future. What are the requirements going to be happen for the organization that are going to be learned? So exactly here, we are covering the 37 of existing law with the new course so this was all the which is covering with this master program and now it come to that what should be the ideal price for that and how the people they will improve for that however if you go to our website which is www.sutrain.com there you can check the price of this program so that is 49,599 rupees. However, we are available on Teachable also. There you can also check out this price. We are also available on Udemy. Then you can also check out this price. So that is available here. But when we engage the people through the different platform, we have the live session also. Then we have some direct engaging related to this program. So there we cost it around 11,999 rupees. But in this live session, if anyone wants to go with this program, where we are offering the special price for the student. So that is just the 199. If any member who wants to go with this program, so they can enroll in this 30 day live mastery program with paying of the 2999 rupees. However, this is not for only this program. If the member who go live with this today's session, so they will also get two additional live programs. So one is the website mastery program so that is cost around 16,000 rupees and second one is the advanced excel programs so that is cost around 13,000 rupees so near about 828,000 rupees of the free bonuses you are getting these two additional program which is costing around 28,000 rupees you are getting free with that where you can become a freelancer for the website design however you can also utilize the self-design pages for the self-website. However, Excel is one of the most important tools that the 95% num of the organization is using for their day-to-day -day activity. So you will be learning the advanced Excel mastery in the, with this program also. So these are the two live sessions or the two programs or courses which is provided with this live program of the 30 day mastery on the level of compliance specialist certificate program and now it will be come to that how people can enroll in that so specifically there are the two and three platforms where we are collecting the payment but specifically we assure that to the our digital partner so this is the pay you money and there is the linkage provided page you can check out that the link here i'm sharing with you on your screen to the chat box so you can check out also it there so how you can get for this program so here i'm sharing the link for that and you can also check, check out this link the same link will be open there and this link so what is here so here is the link is coming to you so that link will be open and that will give you window will be open there you can check out that and this course will come to you so this is the cost for this program through the live session only. However, if you go to the index, so it will cost near about 11,909 rupees, 999 rupees. But further, if you are getting more additional discount on that, that will be 50%, so it will cost you around 5,990. But in the live with this 
two additional courses you are getting this program for the 299 only. So this is specifically the program design on the practical basis where we are focusing to developing the do with the four, the specific required skill for the specialist and that is one of the future required skill mandatory for every people who are in the HR job now. So this was all about this program where we have discussed about the developing the level of compliance and management portfolio in this organization that specifically related to the level of the future perspective. Now it is the third section here specifically kept for the question and answer. However, it is the 7 p.m. But we can expand this section till then we did not complete the session. So whatever the questions you have, you can ask them in the chat box. We are going to recover all those section here. And one important thing is there, this program is the certificate program and you will get your certificate by Wednesday. So for that, you have to share your name, what name you required to mark on the certificate so that you need to share that on the WhatsApp group or otherwise through the email. All those sample which I have shared with you, so that will be reached to you by today only. So however, it may be after eight or otherwise within two days before we come that to completing of this day. So Mohan is asking for, will you share those files? Everything what I have shared with you here, so you will be get all those files. However, addition to that, we will also share you some another files, which also will be helpful for you implement and learning or implement that the level of compliance management portfolio in your organization. You will get all those files. However, the PPT, which I am that the PPT has been rolled here that you will not receive. Instead of the PPT, you will be received or you will be get access to the video recording of this live session. And by tomorrow evening, it will be shared with you by a true email or WhatsApp that you can check out that. And that will be for your lifetime access. When you require to learn from these lessons, you can anytime get access for that. So if you have any question related to this session or otherwise related to this, okay, Mohan, uh, welcome, or related to this mastery program, if anyone wants to go for the next level, so you can also refer to it here right away. And because specifically we are providing the, so Ahmed is asking under what contract the delivery boy are engaged, many meet accident daily, how it is without compliance, who is responsible for the compensation? What is the employment? If that is the delivery boy, that is also the direct employment also, which is covering all that specifically, here of the delivery boy as of now, that is considered as the gigs also because they are not bounded with any agreement. But further, the every law when the service is provided, like there is the compensation is also provided. So you there are the provision if they meet with the accident also, the organization, whatever the agreement has been or appointment has been done based on the what condition it will be defining for that. It will be through the third party also, but then it cover up with the contract level. If it is the direct with the organizers, it come to the, the regulation, which is provided like if that be mostly the restaurant that are specifically, if you're talking about the restaurant, the delivery boy specifically for the restaurant like the Zomato as well as, so they are specifically the direct employee of the these agencies. So it will be covered with the shop and commercial establishment, then all the labor law, which is required to be fulfilled by the or applied to the factory also that is applied to them. So they are also, they will get the compensation under the Compensation Act, uh, Employee Compensation Act 1923. So for that, you have to make them aware that how they can get the compensation and they should aware about these different aspect of the law, which is providing the security to them in case of the accident. So who is it that without compliance, who is responsible for their compensation? Compensation is always a responsibility of the employer who are engaging them. It is not responsibility of that their own. It is a responsibility of those employer who has been engaged them. So now condition is that how they have been engaged. If that is through the contractor, so they have also responsible for that. Because the principal employer is altogether responsible for everything under the law. If you are transferring, if the case specifically the, that the obligation and compliance has been transferred or diverted to the contractor, but all that amount that need to be paid by the principal employer. 
So there are also the provision that the contractor, they need to be, if the ESIC is not applicable, they need to be assured the compensation uh, insurance to them. And for the employer, they are also insured the compensation insurance to them, or if the ESIC is not applicable. If ESIC is applicable, so you need to be complied with that. As per the law, there is not specifically provided they are not considered. However, as of the existing law, there are no such provision or the definition provided for the employee. It is the as per the worker rules. So specifically, as per the new norms, as per the specifically the consideration of the new labor code, it has been provided the specifically the uh, that the gig economy standard for that. So that's why it is covering for that. But if they are not assuring that considering of the employee also, but they are not maintaining the record for that, they have been also right to claim the compensation from the employee because it will be depend on the agreement. So you need to be a documented. Mostly what happened, why this the, the issue happened, when they sign, mostly the people who go for the delivery boy who don't have proper document, they do not sign any proper contract with them, they do not read the condition in that agreement what has been mentioned there. So that is the bigger issue. However, when the employer, they are engaging anyone as a delivery boy, that is their responsibility, it will be comply under the Compensation Act. If anything happened, any accident happened, it is the responsibility of that employer. And if it go to the labor cases, however the document they have, so it will be defined they are whose employee and whom they have been engaged. So that will be defined there. But specifically, the people need to be understand the law, what the law is protecting for that. So it is the labor law compliance people or the HR people. You should make them aware what is your right. That's why it should be proper documentation in the organization when you are implementing, you are engaging any employee. So when you are developing all those systems, it is also required to be documentation, proper documentation. It will help you both, the employer as well as the employee also in certain cases like the accident case also. Is there any further question? If, we, if no any further question, so we are winding up this session here. It is 7.10 now. Okay. So here is a question. If the government does not allow the minimum wage rule, how they will be account? If the government does, does not follow the minimum wage rule, So please elaborate the question. It is not understood properly. The government, how does they allow or follow specifically government where it will be followed? If the government doesn't follow the minimum wage rule, how they will be accounted? Who will be accounted? They will be accounted for that. Minimum wage will be defined by the government. It will be for the employer. Specifically, the labor law that is implemented, which are broadly covering here, that is for the private sector. Like in the Manrega, Manrega is not covering under the labor law. Manrega is a separate. So that is the government policy specifically assuring the certain employment for the villagers that are not the industrial labor. Here we are talking about the industrial worker, or we are talking specifically the industrial labor law. Manrega is the scheme. There is no law applicable so for that the specifically the rate and the minimum wage that has been minimum assuring daily wage. That is the daily. That is not the timing of because the Manrega is providing or assuring the hundred day of employment to the liberal or specifically it was when it was introduced and specifically the concept behind that the people in the village who do not have employment so they need to be assured 100 days of employment for the certain amount so it has been separate it is the government scheme it is not a no more question thank you so much for joining this uh, live session today we are binding it here so what we have learned specifically learning the three major perspective related to the preparing you further in the future how you have to comply with the regulation of the different industry level law which is related to the 
liberal in the industries, how you have to assure that there are the different types of the perspective available, which you need to be assured as well as you need to educate the people also. So that's why this is the one of the major perspective for the future also, as well as the industry that are going to be impacted tremendously when these four new codes will be implemented.